Oh, I am Matthew from Hijinks to answer to the degree in open shadow. Please welcome on the sofa is our Unity Festival director, Ben Pitty Wade. Hi Matthew. Hi Benny. Um tell the viewers what you've been um, what you do with high drinks and how long you've been working here. I've been working here since April two thousand and seven. So about eight years and a half or something. And what I do is I run the Unity well, I, I program the Unity Festival. And we all have a part in running it, really. Uh, but I put all the programme together and try and make that side of things work out. And I make sure that the academy is ticking over OK and you're all happy in your training and have lots of opportunities with different tutors coming in to train you on the academy. And I arrange for different companies to come in and leave residencies. Um, so these are our week-long residencies that that you take part in and other academy students take part in and also people that aren't involved in hijinks pay to come and do with us, don't they? People without yeah. disability do those as well. Um, so I do that and I direct as well some of the performances that we make. So things like the Snoops Brothers, I directed that. That's cool. Would you like a martini? Would I like a martini? Yeah. Do you have one? Oh yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Where is it? Right here. Well it's almost End of work time, isn't it? So I could. Oh, it's it's a yeah. mime martini. Oh, that's the best type. Yeah. Right then, Dan. Yeah. Why is hygiene so important to you? Why is it important to me? Because I believe in what we do. I believe that um, I enjoy working with everyone on the academy, and I enjoy creating opportunities for for everyone, the, all the actors that we work with with learning disabilities. Um, to be involved in exciting projects and exciting performances and go to exciting places and and um, and surprise people with what we do as well. Oh, that's cool. What's a lovely day? Right what then, was that? Then. What's a lovely day? What a lovely day? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? It is, yeah. That's where it's weekend. Is it? Oh yeah, it could be even hotter. Are we going on a tangent now? Oh, we are. No, no, we're not. No. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Question then: <laughs> If you if you win the lottery and donated millions to hijinks, what would you spend the money on, but not a holiday? So it's assumed that I donate millions of pounds to hijinks. Yeah. <laughs> we would have a huge festival that would just like fill Cardiff. It would be unmissable. No one would not know what unity is because it would be everywhere um, during one week in the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd create huge ambitious projects that would, you know, hang people from helicopters and uh, <laughs> you'd be on ships out at sea and unusual places that we can't normally afford to use um, and have the fullest and most exciting production teams that we could put together. Or we'd have our own venue. Why don't we build hijinks towers and have Ooh. our own theatres in there that we can put what we want into mm. and rehearsal spaces. Mm. Yeah? It's going to take a lot more than a cafe. Money. We'd have our own hijinks cafe. Oh, yeah. What yeah, would we do in the hijinks cafe? Oh, we'd be dying our thirst. Dying of thirst? Yeah. We've got to serve drinks, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> we could have a bar in there. Yeah. It'd be yeah. brilliant. Get a couple of wines. Yeah, we'd have lots of wine. Yeah, yeah that would be. If, if money was no issue, we'd. Um, there's, I think there'd be plenty of ideas for what we'd want to do with it. Oh, that's cool. This is a, a hard question for you, especially being a director and everything. Mm. What is your favourite part and why? That's quite tricky, and I um, can't really choose a favourite because. If I choose a favourite, then people that aren't in that favourite, they'll go to me, why, why isn't Alpod your favourite? And um, 
it will put me in an awkward position, so I'm, I have to pass. Oh. I enjoy all of them. Every time we do a performance, the new, the one that I'm doing the performance of is my favourite, because there's always new little things that happen, new things that come out each performance that surprise me. So there isn't really a favourite. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay then, Dave. What would you think about the Academy journey so far, and will it still be the future? It's been exciting so far because we only started the Academy in 2012, didn't we? 11. It was 12, I think. No, it was 11 then. I'm sure it was 12. It was 11. Maybe it was in November 2011. You were, because you started on Creative Choices, and then in, in January in 2012, we started the Academy proper. Yeah. Um, so we're both right. <laughs> so, but, so seeing everyone's progress just since 2012 has been amazing. And I think everyone that was on the Academy from the beginning is kind of what you do now in terms of how you work in rehearsals and when we're with doing the residencies, you're kind of unrecognisable, I think, from how it was in 2012, because everyone's kind of grown a lot, which is fab. And I think the future is we're looking to expand to North Wales at the moment, oh. so we want to offer similar opportunities up there. And the future in Cardiff is going to be well, hopefully we'll be able to open up a second academy in Cardiff at some point, Ooh. so we have more people training, and more opportunities for you all to perform um, in professional productions as well. So we're trying to push the agenda, the idea within the industry, arts industry, that people should employ people with learning disabilities for learning disabled roles. Yeah. And so part of that is we're talking, we're trying to become recognised as somewhere that casting agents to go, can go to um, that uh, different production companies can go to if they're looking for a learning disabled actor and we can help them to find work for you guys. Oh. What's the best performance you see at Unity Festival and what would you like to see in 2015? <laughs> best performance... There's been a few... <sighs> Um, that's what directors are like. <laughs> Indecisive. I love, you know, I still love Danza Mobile's um, oh, flamenco pieces. Sierra Los Ojos was great. Close your eyes. Um, and it had fantastic audiences, and it was all very, res and they were audience was really responsive, throwing flowers at the end and everything. So that was lovely. Um, Back-to-back theatre, small metal objects, that was fantastic having that here because mm -hmm. um, that's just a really stunning piece of performance. And Circuit Extremists, um, probably last year, was, was, was the highlight. 2015, yeah. we're looking at Circuit Extremists coming back okay. with a show that's um, it's kind of sequel to the one they did here, which was about propane gas bottles and planks and balancing. Ooh. Uh, but this one's got propane gas, bo gas bottles Planks and don't do it at home, guys. Well, and a digger. Oh, so Debbie, don't do it at home. The character Remy, who's a, who's a wheelchair user, one of the performers, he turns up in a digger, and they, they there's a lot of playing with planks and the guys, the two acrobats, balancing with planks on this digger and stuff. It's very dangerous, uh, oh. but looks very funny. Um, so that's going to be one of the highlights from next year. Which story would you like to see in Odyssey? Tell. Tell in one of the Christmas shows. What story would I like told in one of the Christmas shows? Yeah. For Odyssey? Yeah. Of any story? Any story? Not a Christmassy story? Any story? Do a any story? Any story that brings about. That brings about, I'd like, like to hear, because a lot of the Odyssey shows are based on things like the good, the bad and the cuddly, so we have there's a cowboy theme. Do you mean something like this, so like the Wizard of Oz, there was a... Um, the Oz of Wizard or something it was called, wasn't there? Yeah. Okay. Well, how about something like um, Hansel and Gretel? Oh. Like a grim fairy tale. Oh, fairy tale. Oh, yeah. I bet I'd be the Yeah. So they find they, Hansel and Gretel. I think that's the story. They find the um, the house made of cakes, don't they, or and sweets? Yeah. Something like that. Now, be our last question. Think about this one before you answer. What does the H stand for without a dictionary? What does the H stand for? Yeah. 
the H, what, on the back of your cards? Yes. You've got a H on the back of your cue cards. Yes. Well, it stands for hijinks. But any other words with H apart from hijinks? How about uh, hyperactive? Ah, uh, I think it's one of you, darlings. <laughs> okay, right. Well, thank you, Bill, for a wonderful night. It's good night for me on the Matthew Pinnacle Show. It's good night for my belly. And I'll see you next week for part five. Thank you, Matthew.